In this video, I'm going to be doing a beginner-friendly DIY solar hookup. Everything I do in this video, you can size it up for a bigger system, but I'm going to do a smaller system for this video. I've got some products in from Bouge RV. I have their 30 amp PWU charge controller, as well as I have their 180 watt solar panel. So let's get started on the build. The first thing I've done is I've mounted this board onto my workbench. This is going to be the base of our system. So this can be the wall or compartment in your RV or camper or in a cabin or something like that. So I can mount all of the different components I'm going to be using and we're going to create some power from the sun. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at this 30 amp PWU charger from Bouge RV. So in the box we have our 30 amp charger and we have our two connection ports for solar and to the battery. So pretty easy to follow. And you can see on the side here, we have some mounting points to mount it to the wall. And we have a USB plug-in, a heat sink on the back to keep everything cool once it starts converting power. And we have a sticker on the top that says negative grounded. This is a 12 or 24 volt system and it has a maximum current of 30 amps. So let's mount this to the board and we'll move on from there. Now also included in this charge controller packet are these connections here to wire up the actual charge controller. So you'll crimp your wire to here and then insert it in here before you tighten it up. And that's gonna give you a solid connection. It's really nice that they included these. Uh, something else to mention about this charge controller I noticed in the user manual is that you can do a maximum of 55 volts on the system so you do not want to exceed 55 volts so now that you have your charge controller mounted uh, you're going to want to have some way to interrupt the power coming in from the solar charge controller so i'm just going to be using this breaker here you can open it up to uh, disconnect the power or you can reset it so power flows now this is for a 12 volt system if you are going to be series connecting your panels for a higher voltage, you need to buy the appropriate breaker or fuse for your scenario. But for me, using a 12 volt system, this is gonna be ideal. So we're gonna go ahead and mount that up to the board as well. So also Bouge RV included in some pure copper PV wire. Now, anytime you're hooking up a solar system, you're gonna to wanna to use the right wire for what you're setting up. And this is PV grade wire. So for this, I only need to connect from here to the positive terminal on the charge controller. So I'm just going to take some of the red wire. Okay, now I did have to shave, I did have to shave this a little bit like a pencil so that this connector can fit on. But we just want to get the connector on there and then I have a pair of crimpers like this this is from Titan I will leave links in the description below for everything I use here so we're just going to literally run that and you can see we have a very nice crimp give the wire a good tug make sure it's on there and we're good okay now we have this in here we can tighten up the wire Now we need to run this over and into the charge controller. So I'm gonna to wanna to open up this screw all the way. And then give, make sure you give your cable a nice good tug. And we know it's in there. And we can use a clip later on to hold this up here tight like that. Now it's time to run the negative wire. So for the negative, I'm just gonna run a straight connection to an MC4. And that way I can just plug my solar panels in and unplug them anytime I want. To run your MC4 connectors to your charge controller, uh, this wire here with the red O-ring is gonna be your positive and this is gonna be your negative. So what you're gonna wanna do is basically work from the panel back to make sure that you have the right connections. And then on the kit, you can see this is gonna be the connection here. So what I wanna do is put this same connector coming off of my red wire here. 
So also Bouger V also gave me a MC4 connector kit. So this is a kit and we have a bunch of MC4 connectors, the tools to make all the crimps and connections. So pretty neat, we're gonna use that. Uh, with the solar wire itself, it came with extra connectors. So we will go ahead and make up our positive connection. Now, whenever you're connecting these MC4s, you need to pay particular attention. The connection with the O-ring, with the red O-ring, uses the bigger hole, and then the connection without the red O-ring uses the smaller hole to connection here. So you need to make sure that you're aware of which one to use. I've messed this up so many times. Every time I do it, I kick myself in the butt. So we are going to be looking to use this connection on our red wire because from here we're going to be using an extension cable and I'm going to be using the smaller hold one. So what you're going to want to use is this crimper here and I'm not sure how well you can see it on the video but on this crimper this is kind of got a curve to it so that when you crimp it down it's actually going to cause these two pieces of metal to kind of spiral in. It's going to spiral in and actually crimp and hold that wire really well. So we have our wire and our crimping tool. We're going to stick our wire in and then give it a good tight squeeze. And as you can see there, the wire, the crimp has actually folded in to contact all these wires. And that is a perfectly good crimp. We'll put on this piece here, which is gonna give it a nice good seal for water. And then you put your screw on. Now in the kit, we have these little wrenches. So you can put that around the wire and you can just tighten it. And then they also have these little tabs here so that when you have these connected, you can push that in there and it will release the two wires. All right, now we have our positive wire fused into the charge controller. So now let's hook up a negative wire and the negative wire, I'm gonna wanna run in and try and follow the same length. Okay, and now I'm gonna add my piece onto the wire. Now you don't necessarily have to use these pieces here. You can just run the wire right up into the charge controller, but since they included it in the package, I'm going to use it. Okay, give that a good tug. And again, we will use the crimper that was included in the kit. Beautiful crimp. Now we can add, now make sure when you put these on that you put your cap on here because as soon as you lock that in, you're not gonna be able to get it back out. Now I could quite literally hook up my positive wire and my negative wire and run this charge controller. But we need to hook up a battery first before we run the charge controller. You always wanna have your charge controller hooked up to battery. You never ever just wanna have it hooked up to solar. So anytime you're gonna work on your system, it's great to have this disconnect right here so that you can work on everything. Okay, so now it's time to get set up for the battery. Now for the battery, I'm gonna be using this 50 amp breaker. Now you need to size your breakers to whatever gauge wire you're gonna be using. So I'm gonna wait for that fan to shut down before I continue. Okay, so now for my battery hookup, I'm gonna be using this 50 amp breaker. Now you need to size your breakers to your wire gauge. So I'm gonna be using 10 gauge wire, so I'm gonna use a 50 amp breaker. Now there's plenty of plenty of calculators out there on the internet, all you need to Google is DC wire gauge calculator and then it'll ask you how many amps you're drawing, how many volts you are 
and how long the wires are for your system. So if you're running two feet, put two feet, 10 feet, put 10 feet, and it'll give you the appropriate gauge wire for the voltage drop and everything. So I'm just gonna be using this 50 amp breaker. Okay, now that we got the breaker on, let's just see where we can mount our inverter. So this is gonna create AC power from DC batteries. This is a 400 watt powered inverter and it has two plugins as well as some USBs on this side here as well as this side. And we have an on off for the actual inverter. So let's mount this up as well. And this is gonna help us run our battery cables. Next, I want to run a DC fuse box. So we're gonna run one of these fuse boxes and what this is gonna allow us to do is protect our wire gauge to the smaller wires that are gonna be running throughout the system. If you have any lights or USBs or cigarette lighter uh, sockets, this is gonna help keep everything safe. So I figure we will run that right about there. Now what I'm gonna do is run my positive cable from here to here because this is also gonna run through to my battery disconnect over here, which is gonna run out to the battery. So for that, I'm gonna run my positive from here to here. For that, I have a little ring terminal. That is gonna go on the wire, and then I'm going to prep it. going to go there. Now something you may have noticed is that this 10 gauge wire is a lot thicker than this 10 gauge because this wire has a lot more sheathing on it which is going to protect it from nicks or anything. So it's still the same diameter wire it's just the protective coating on here is a lot thicker. Okay so now we can run our positive wire off of here and down to the battery. Now for this, this here is good for 10 gauge wire. Very easy to use. I'll leave a link in the description below for a set of these. Okay, now I have my two connections here so I can go ahead and put the washer on, lock washer and the nut and make sure we tighten it down. Okay, we're good and tight. Okay, so now I have my solar charge controller connected. It just runs right through and to the battery positive over here. So now let's run a positive wire from here to the inverter. Positive is run to the inverter. Now we can tighten down the positive connection over here. So next we can start to run our negative wire. So again, I'm going to start from the charge controller, bring it over to the fuse block here. And this isn't going to be fused here. This is just kind of a connection just to keep everything clean. So next I'm going to run the negative. Okay, so now I'm going to run my negative wire from here over to the inverter. And then from the inverter is going to go to the battery negative as well. Okay, I've got all the wires run and I have my battery positive negative. So the positive is going to run into the breaker, which then protects it against any kind of over amperage on the wiring so that it doesn't go on fire. And it comes out here, one battery cable runs up to the fuse block and the second battery cable runs into the inverter. From the fuse block, we have the battery positive from Bouge RV DWU charge controller. Then the negative runs through, runs through the power block and then runs over to the inverter negative and then the inverter negative also runs over to the battery negative. Uh, now for my battery for this, I'm gonna be using a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now you can use a lead acid battery as well and you can monitor it with the voltage, but with lithium iron phosphate, it's not very accurate to go off the voltage alone. So it's good to buy a battery that has Bluetooth because then you can have an app on your phone and actually see what your state of charge is. So let's go ahead and hook up our battery. So we have our system off. Now let's connect our negative wire. We'll tighten them down. And now we are ready to throw the breaker. All right. And straight away we can see that the Bouge RV has come on here. We also 
We also have power to our inverter, so that's good. Okay, now looking at the charge controller, you can see that we have a battery setting for B3. This is gel. We want to change that to B5. Okay, and there you can see B5. We can go back and forth. Okay, so now we are set to battery B5, which is lithium iron phosphate. And the way that that is set is you press and hold on the button once you're selected. Then you can either go through. They actually have lithium titanate on here as well, which is pretty cool. And then when you've got your selection, you just press and hold the right button. And now it's saved into the memory. So now we have our battery setting. Next is going to be we're running a 12 volt system. And we want our high voltage disconnect at 14.6. I'm actually going to lower this down a little bit because you want this to be lower than the BMS cutoff. Oh, wrong button. Let's press and hold the left button. Uh -huh. Okay. And I'm actually going to put this at 14.2 for my lithium iron phosphate. Then we have our temperature, which I am in Canada. So I want it to be on Celsius. And we have no PV voltage. So we're good to go. So now we are pretty much set up just to run solar. So here you can see we have the battery voltage 13.2. The PV amps is zero because I don't have PV plugged in. Now I'm ready to head outside and plug in the 180 watt Bougier V solar panel that they provided me and see how everything works. Okay, finally I've got a sunny day to show you all. So I have the Bougier V uh, 180 watt, I believe. Yep, 180 watt panel. Uh, we're gonna hook this up to the charge controller and see how it performs. So on this panel, we have solar panel, maximum power, 180 watts, maximum power current, 10 amps, maximum power voltage is gonna be 18 volts, and open circuit voltage is 21.6 volts, and short circuit current is gonna be 10.4 volts. Okay, I got the solar panel sitting there on the ground connected, and uh, let's head into the house and see what we're getting on the charge controller. Okay, now I have the uh, two MC4 connectors here coming in. Now, even though these are color coded and it's gonna match up here, uh, something you always wanna do before you connect every, anything is you wanna check the polarity of your solar panel. So by that, we'll just use a multimeter. And you can see there, we have uh, 23.6 volts and it is in the correct orientation with the positive and negative. So now that we know that that's correct, we can go ahead and plug in our solar array. Okay, so we are ready to flick the switch. And I'll bring you in a little closer. So now you can see there, we have 7.2 amps coming in on the PV. And we can test with our clamp meter. So the clamp meter is showing eight amps and we're showing 7.7 .7 amps on the charge controller. So we're off by a couple of milliamps, but no big deal. And let's check the app. 
So the app on the BMS is showing 8 amps and charge controller 7.7, .7, which is okay. It's only off by a couple of milliamps. So there you go, we are now charging and we have a whole complete system now. So since the last time I filmed, I added in some fuses here and a couple of leads and they run out to this 12 volt cigarette lighter as well as it runs to some USBs that I can turn on and off here on the side, which is great because this will have a standby consumption. 400 watt inverter. Uh, you're probably wondering why I use that. This DeWalt quick charger uses roughly about like 370 watts. So this 400 watt charger is gonna be perfect for running my quick charge battery charger. So as you can see there, we are charging. Let's check the app. So we are still consuming minus 10 amps by charging. Let's disconnect the phone, turn that off. So we're still consuming roughly about 10 amps by charging my battery here. And if I turn that off, now we're back to charging at almost six amps, 6.4 amps, probably because the panel's got a bit of shade. But regardless, we are charging. And uh, just to show you with this panel here, if I have a loss or a burnt out fuse, you can see the light will come on there to tell me that this one's burnt out. So pretty neat there. So this was a video on kind of hooking up a basic solar system. Now I'm gonna keep this system on the board and maybe in the future I'll do another video, maybe getting a bigger inverter, maybe getting a couple more solar panels and hooking them up in parallel and speaking about that. But single panel, single charge controller, a little bit of a setup here for your fuse box and your USB and cigarette lighter plugins as well as a little inverter and you can charge a DeWalt quick charge battery. So I think that's gonna be handy for some people with everybody going with battery uh, lawnmowers and snow blowers and whatnot. This is a great little system to hook up for that just so you can have it in your shed and you don't have to run power through the ground or very dangerous extension cord across the ground. Um, you can use lead acid, you can use sealed lead acid and you can use lithium iron phosphate with this charge controller. Uh, it's very handy, it can do multiple things. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section if you want me to go over something specific on how to hook things up. Leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, bye.